hi it is wednesday and it's about let's see two o'clock in the afternoon um i've decided that now is about the time that i want to start actually doing some reading is is that it's a wonderful sunny day outside i do want to kind of go outside and sit in the hammock and read however i do also want to work on my puzzle Jeff just texted me, it is Thursday. <laughs> trying to decide whether or not I wanna go out in the hammock and read for a little bit, or if I wanna put on an audiobook and listen to that while I do a puzzle. I realized I had uh, Felix Ever After and the audiobook, and I think this might be like, not necessarily lighter in content, lighter in hopefully like audiobook narration. Realizing this sort of haziness on this side um, is because I put my front-facing screen protector on wrong. So it's just, this is just gonna be here, this like glowy daytime talk show fuzzy corner thing. <laughs> Somebody is enjoying his work day outside. I can see. Maybe I will go outside in the hammock for a little bit then. Oh. What you, what, you, what you got there? Here? What's, what's... Open the door so I can talk to you. I got my grands that you made for breakfast. What's that? I got my grands that you made for breakfast. That I, you mean my cinnamon rolls that I made from scratch? Um. That most definitely didn't come from a tube. <laughs> I mean, if anyone will believe that. I decided I am actually gonna go outside and sit in the hammock and can you stop licking my feet? I like to start audiobooks um, like while reading the physical book typically and then I like to switch it up and um, what am I trying to say? I like to start, stop licking my feet you weirdo. Um, I like to start an audiobook while having the physical book, or at least for like the first maybe like 50 pages until it sort of establishes a voice and a character. And then I'm able to kind of put focus somewhere else and um, like do a puzzle or something while listening to the audiobook. Just sort of like once I understand who the characters are. Okay, so I came in from outside. Um, yeah, this is the most book I've read in one chunk in a really long time. I am 91 pages in, so just about chapter seven. And it's definitely what I needed to sort of get myself out of a slump. I don't know what, I, I, lately I've sort of gotten it in my head that I need to sort of stay, not stay away from YA, but sort of move into more quote like adult voices, because let's get real, I'm 32. Um, but it's also really nice to go back and revisit YA and read from a younger um, voice and a younger perspective. Teenagers com coming and going from apartments and different groups and stuff like that. And it's, it, I don't know, I really, I just really like the environment. The other book that I'm reading right now is also set in New York City, so it's kind of weird. But one thing I'm really liking about Felix as a character and something that is just so... Um, I don't, want to see, I don't want to use the word refreshing, but so like soul nurturing, I don't know, is the openness in which all of the characters, Felix included, um, 
talk about their sexuality and their gender identity and you know being 32 graduating from high school in 2007 um you know the age back in 2006 these conversations were not happening when i was a teenager um at least for me especially growing up in a very conservative town a uh, very small conservative town these conversations weren't happening and you know the fact that there's just this group of teens and you know they're sitting in a party saying like yeah like wait so everyone here is queer and they're like yeah we're not friends with straight people <laughs> and that's me now as a 32 year old that's kind of my friend group it feels like but um I didn't have that when I was 17 and so it sort of plays into that conversation of you know why why do adults read YA well it's because I didn't have this <laughs> um as a teenager and it kind of nurtures your sort of inner child a little bit it kind of nurtures your um your past self I definitely wasn't reading books with trans characters, pansexual characters, bisexual characters, queer characters. Um, I wasn't reading books like that, let alone, you know, having conversations with my peers about anything like that either. Um, so this is very, I don't want to say refreshing because that's such a stupid word, but it's, um, I don't know, it just, it, it makes my heart feel good. <laughs> um, it gives you, it gives me, you know, it just gives me this feeling of, you know, like the kids are going to be okay. <laughs> you know, being an older queer person, um, I, you know, I didn't come out as pansexual until I was 30 or 31. And so um, reading books like this kind of just, it really does cater to like my teenage self where I go, oh, fuck, like I, I really wish I would have had these you know these kind of stories i wish it was more common to talk about you know i see so many teenagers and younger people um you know in their early 20s and whatnot just so open and so accepting of one another and just so um able to express who they are without judgment that oh it just it makes me happy and i mean it's no, it doesn't come without struggles, obviously. Um, you know, things aren't 100% perfect, but even having uh, 15 years or however long since I've been in high school, the changes that have happened um, in terms of acceptance in the world, it just blows my mind. So um, it makes me really excited for the future. So that's kind of like a hopeful a hopeful thing. Another thing that I'm really connecting with Felix about is the discussion of art school. Um, I, if you guys aren't aware of my past, I um, went to art school when I was 18. And so the whole building up a portfolio in high school, applying for art school, while I definitely didn't do it in a city like New York in a private art school or a private art um, high school or anything like that, I definitely know the stress of like building up your portfolio comparing your work to others um not really sure you know where that's going to take it and so i'm not going to lie reading this definitely is mm, messing with my head a little bit just in some of those um feelings that i had repressed <laughs> and i'm like oh don't think about art school don't think about that rejection feeling um it's something that even now as an adult those feelings of uh self-esteem and self-worth when it comes to your art uh, that never goes away and it's um it's hard for me to read that um you know reading about the art school kind of struggles um reading about you know the struggles that felix is having with transphobia and with um their relationship with their dad and dead naming and stuff like that it's sort of just all and all of that combined 91 pages in is making for a really really interesting story and it's making for a very um engaging pa like page turning story so this is what i'm working on which is the jackson pollock uh impossible puzzle that i've worked on for 97 hours but this is about how finished it is so I know you're looking at it and you're like, bitch, this is not, this is not done. Um, no, not, not really. But 
For some reason, I looked at this and I go, ah, yes, almost done. <laughs> Hello, it is a different day. I'm back. Um, I think I'm going to go outside today and finish more of Felix Ever After because I really, really like it. But I kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of an art supply haul. Why not? I bought some art supplies. Starry Night Mask, which is pretty cool. Um, also got some very, very tiny, tiny paintbrushes for working on painting uh, freebies or painting little freebies like this. Um, I needed tiny paintbrushes. Some um, super glossy Mod Podge to kind of go on top, seal it all in. And I got a bunch of things for my um, printmaking. Just a bunch of different mediums to see what is my preferred um, medium. <laughs> so these are more for making prints. So this is just like a lino cut block. This is a little bit of like a harder um, material to work with. Then you have something like this, which is like a vinyl that you can carve in. Um, and this needs to get flattened flat, but shouldn't be too hard to do. Then you have something that's a little bit more flimsy, um, different material. And then you sort of carve away, make prints with that. Then you have something that is more like using an eraser. You carve away at this and make prints with this. So basically, my haul was just four different mediums of the same art set type. I'm tired, can you tell? Figure out which one I like best. I have a feeling I might like the vinyl possibly the best or also the hard block but things might be too hard to carve i don't know we'll see so i can make some prints because that is something that i have been enjoying doing for more of my um art stuff that i'm interested in hey hey
this little guy is coming to steal my hot dog bun. Oh, there, there he is. There, he, oh, there he is. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes. Uh oh, you coming back for? You coming back for second, sir? Oh, there it is. No, no. Off he goes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hello, it's another day. Please ignore my hair. I look like John Ralphia. It's, it looks cute for two seconds and then doesn't. It, it changes every day. It is what it is. I am struggling to do. Oh, my, <laughs> my neighbor is on his deck, just arms out chillaxing. I'm about that. <laughs> I would show you, but that's weird, so I'm not going to. That's an invasion of privacy. But he's just like arms out like this <laughs> on his deck chilling. He seems like he's having a good time. Anyway, we are going to go scout out Furby photo shoot locations. And I know that seems silly, but I have 5,700 Furbies. And I want to take a series of photos with them. Um, my office is a wreck, but I have like 50 of them, as you can see, and I eventually want to take all of them and lay them out, but we're trying to scout out a good enough like location to do it. I think that's what we're going to go to do. I'm going to maybe take like, how many is not all of them, but enough. <laughs> um, I might take like as many as are going to fit in a backpack. 10, 8, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10 Furbies. And we're going to see um, if I can find some locations to where when I want to take 50 of them, it's going to be easy enough to put them all in like a big backpack and do that because I have ideas. So this is what I wear when I don't want to get ready. Um, this is my new favorite hat. It says Bigfoot is real and you try to eat my ass. Read that two ways. You could read it as Bigfoot is real and he tried to eat my ass, which is like, I'm running away from Bigfoot. He's going to eat my ass or Bigfoot is real. and He tried to eat my ass, you know, but yeah, that's, it's entirely how you want to interpret it, but we're going to go for a location hunting on this fine father's day. If you too are like me and you hate father's day and you didn't have a good father, I'll be your dad. Get your fishing rod, bucko. And we're, we're grilling hot dogs. Hi everybody, it is now another day. <laughs> I think I laugh left off. Um, last left off, we were gonna go try to scout out some locations um, to take some pictures of the freebies that I have. And yep, that ended up being just a rough day. Um, it's really, really hard for me right now as somebody who is really working through their mental illness and like really attempting to be a better person um, to have those days where you feel like you are really successful and then you have a particularly rough day. That's what I can describe it. When all my days were always rough, having a good day felt really good. Now, when you're sort of are having sort of consistently neutral and some good days that feel really nice when you have a bad day it feels almost like 10 times worse if that's makes sense to anybody who's sort of building themselves up as a person so yeah it's been kind of a weird last couple days have i done any reading no the reason why i'm in the comfy chair today is for those of you who might be new just to me um i had a pretty rough work injury almost it'd be like two years in august um and i fucked up a nerve in my um in my neck and shoulder like kind of like right up in this area on this side and basically lost feeling in my hand and all that stuff and it was really really bad and so me as a person i hold all my stress and anxiety in my shoulders which is why uh, my neck and my shoulders which is one of the reasons why i got that injury along with the movement from work and stuff it was just an accident but um now when i have particularly hard stressful days i 
whether I want to or not, I try to release my shoulders and my tension, but sometimes I'll sleep like all bundled up like this, you know, and then I wake up and I'm just in ridiculous like neck pain and shoulder pain. And that happens to be today. So as much as I want to, you know, clean my house, do some tasking that I'm meaning to get done, um, you know, just housework and also projects. Um, there's some art that I was working on yesterday while my shoulders were a little bit sore and even doing, um, I make art prints and even sort of carving out wood blocks. It really messed it up. So like, I'm, I'm really sore today is what I'm trying to get at. Even better, I have furniture moving into my house today from Jeff's grandparents' house. Um, some really nice, like mid-century modern furniture. And I was supposed to wake up today and sort of organize, like clean out the area that we're moving the furniture into. And I'm like, I can't do that. So it's one of those days where I'm fighting the urge to, um, to rest. Even though I know that's what my body needs, I'm fighting the urge to do it because for the longest time with my job that I just quit, um, I would sort of push through my pain levels and ignore my pain. And what that resulted in is me getting hurt worse um, and me just having all these fucking, you know, issues, um, both mentally and physically, because I would just brush them off like, yep, I'm fine. I got to do my got to do my job, got to do my job. And so it's hard for me even right now, you know, not working, trying to take care of myself to really stop and go, you are going to hurt yourself if you just tornado through the house the way that you want to. And that's hard, that's hard to admit, but it's something that I, I'm, I'm okay disappointing other people today because I know that if I go downstairs and I move half the shit in my basement in order to put this fucking furniture down there, that I'm going to be sore for like, instead of maybe two days, like a week. What benefit is that going to get me? None. Absolutely none. Just for the satisfaction of the movers can move the furniture downstairs instead of, you know, maybe contacting a family member in a week to help us move it downstairs then. Does that make sense? So, oh, that's, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm in the comfy chair today. I am just in so much fucking neck pain. It's like traveling all up into my skull and about halfway down my back and all down my arm. It's bad. Well, it's 11.48 a.m. I'm going to watch TikToks for 12 minutes and then I'm going to finish the rest of, or as much as I want to, of Felix Ever After because I took a break from that book, but I'm really, really liking it. Um, right now we're at an interesting part in the book because Felix is experiencing this sort of um, transphobia in these messages from somebody that they're like Felix doesn't know um, who it is it really makes you sort of unsettled as a reader as Felix is sort of trying to figure out who is sending these messages you as a reader you're kind of trying to piece together like could it be you know the dad could it be this friend could it be you know the the mom could it be you know all these different characters and in a way, it sort of puts you, the reader, into that feeling of not being able to trust anybody and not being able to know where everybody's head is at when it comes to, um, you know, their opinion of uh, Felix being trans. What I'm trying to get at is that the writing is very good at making you, um, as a reader, relate to Felix in that sense of, I don't trust anybody. I don't know who's doing this to me. I don't trust anybody. And it's it's really letting you sort of sit in that unsettled, unsettling feeling that, um, you know, being queer, being trans, you, you, you experience on a regular basis. Like, you just can't trust anybody in the book or anybody in your life or anybody in Felix's life, period, um, to be a supportive person. You don't know who is doing this to them. Um... Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm hoping that the book we sort of find out, you know, what's going on, what's going on. And it sort of, you know, hopefully picks up in like a happier sort of ending about halfway, a little less than halfway through right now. So and then get into my book and I'll update you with um, thoughts and stuff. 
because this one's making me think. Not deep thoughts, but I wasn't expecting to sort of have um, this level of emotion reading a book, which I haven't had in a minute. I've read just a lot of, um, lately, all I've read is sort of like really intense mental health, super strong emotion stuff. That's like, hi, would you like to read one sentence and then ball your face off and question every fucking relationship you ever had in your life? Picked up this sort of, quote, lighter YA, expecting to sort of just almost check my brain out. And I'm doing just the opposite. So I'm just kind of surrendering myself to feeling emotions in this book and uh, seeing where it takes me. Hey folks, I finally finished uh, Felix Ever After last night. Um, what a fantastic book. I ended up giving it five stars. Um, I stayed up last night and <laughs> finished it. And my little kitty decided to like cuddle right up next to my body like underneath the blankets which she never does so I actually stayed up and finished reading a book for like two hours. I up until this moment haven't really read too too many books that have such a um a detailed like honest I say honest but well-written um description of trying to figure out your identity and to figure out your like gender identity and how people react and how uh, your friends can defend you and people can tear you down. Um, it's a really well-crafted book. Like, it's really, 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 really good. And um, it's just beautiful. By the end, I was cried a little bit because it was just, like, tender and nice. Um, but, yeah, I want to show you guys my dress today. Is that weird? Um, this is a dress I actually found at, like, the thrift store, and it's so weird. I don't know why this happens to me. Um, this actually happened with my wedding dress, but my wedding dress was actually already um, handmade for someone else, and it fit me perfectly, which is fucking weird. This is a dress I found at the thrift store. Someone clearly made this. Like, it is hand-sewn. Well, shit, if it doesn't fucking fit me perfectly, I'm gonna try to show you. This is the dress. It's like a little bit longer than stuff I normally wear. Like normally I wear things that like, you know, go above the knee, that kind of stuff. But this like fits perfectly. I got really tiny waist and then big, big hips. And it fits so good. And it ties here. And I look like I'm about to go to the fucking farmer's market. Who made this? What lady made this and was like, I don't fucking like this anymore. Someone else is gonna go to the farmer's market in this. But yeah, that is the end of this week's first week of reading vlogs. Um, I realize it's maybe not like the most exciting, but this is my life. Not that exciting right now. I'm not working. I'm not doing shit. I think it really hard to navigate new mental health pathways um, and also read. So this is what you get. You get one book <laughs> in a week and that's my life. Um, a little bit of an update going into next week. This is gonna be where it gets interesting. Um, in like five or six days, I have no idea what day it is, um, I'm getting my wisdom teeth out at 32, which means it's not gonna be a fun recovery. Um, it's not gonna be fun period. I'm getting all four out. So great. I'm fully anticipating like a week of solid mouth pain. <laughs> I also have really bad mouth pain just in general like with teeth stuff and um, my pain tolerance typically is high but not when it comes to my face. So um, I'm fully expecting to be KO for like a week. Yeah, so I'm going to end this vlog here and get started on the following week. It might actually be in the same outfit starting today when I do like reading week vlog, I don't know what I'm gonna call this, um, round two. And just, you know, a little bit of clips about my life because I'm not reading a whole fucking lot, but I wanna make content. Mommy made your favorite content. Here you go. That is what we're going to do. I don't even know how to be a person anymore. You know? Okay, bye.